Would it be weird to say that I just wore a judge's robe at all times? Hey, whatever works. We're getting into character with Melissa Roush for her new role on Night Court. And we've got the stories that define the week on People in 10. I'm Makon Jovu bringing you everything you need to know about pop culture right now. 10 minutes are on the clock, so let's get to it with the first five. Starting with this week's People Cover Story, an exclusive with Prince Harry, who's opening up about his explosive memoir. Harry tells us that Spare is a raw account of his life, the good, the bad, and everything in between. The world really gets to see him now for who he is on his terms. Until now, Harry writes that he's mostly been defined by his role as the Spare to his brother, the heir, Prince William. Harry may be royal, but he thinks siblings everywhere can relate to the comparisons between him and William. Despite his and his wife Meghan Markle's tense relationship with the royal family, Harry says he wants it to be different for his kids. He tells us he wants Archie and Lilibet to have relationships with his family, and the fact that they already do with some of them brings him great joy. In Spare, Harry also reflects on the pain of losing his mom, Princess Diana, and grandmother, Queen Elizabeth. Harry tells people that he feels his mother's presence all the time, calling her his guardian angel. As for Queen Elizabeth, he says he misses her dearly, including her cheeky sense of humor and quick wit. And we're learning some more lighthearted things about him too. Harry and Meghan are big fans of In-N-Out Burger in LA. Harry revealed that his go-to order is two double-doubles, animal style, fries and a Coke, while Meghan loves a cheeseburger and fries with jalapenos on the side. And Harry reveals some pretty big bombshells in the book, like losing his virginity at 17, learning about the Queen's death online, and even fighting within the royal family. At one point in the book, Harry refers to William as his beloved brother, but also his arch nemesis. There has always been this competition between us, weirdly. Harry also details an alleged altercation over Harry's relationship with Meghan Markle. He claims it got physical and William knocked him to the floor. He also delves into his complex feelings when his father, King Charles, married Queen Camilla in 2005. Harry writes that he and William asked their father not to marry Camilla, but notes that ultimately he wanted his father to be happy. He wanted Camilla to be happy too, because as he puts it, maybe she would be less dangerous. I don't look at her as an evil stepmother. Harry told Michael Strahan on Monday that what made Camilla dangerous was her relationship with the British press. She had a reputation or an image to rehabilitate. The pair haven't spoken in some time, but Harry says that when they see each other, they are perfectly pleasant. Next up, the big wins and buzzed about moments from Tuesday's Golden Globes. Host Gerard Carmichael didn't pull any punches. He got gasps from the audience when he took aim at Tom Cruise in Scientology with one of his jokes. And he also addressed last year's racism scandal, saying he was only asked to host because he's black. Later in the night, Best Supporting Actress Angela Bassett made history. It's hard to believe, but Angela is the first actor from the Marvel Cinematic Universe to win a Golden Globe. While Best Picture went to the Fablemans for drama and the Banshees of Inisherin for musical comedy. I just don't like you no more. You liked me yesterday. Star Colin Farrell also took Best Actor in a Musical or Comedy, while Austin Butler won that title in drama. Everything Everywhere All at Once made a splash too. Every rejection, every disappointment has led you here. And Michelle Yeoh, who won Best Actress in a Comedy, claimed her time on stage. She even joked, shut up please, as the broadcast tried to play her off during her speech. In TV, House of Dragon flew in for Best Drama Series, while Abbott Elementary nabbed the top comedy honors and two acting wins. That's good. Good. It's good. I'm yeah. so happy to hear that. It's good, yeah. The White Lotus had its moment for limited series. And Hollywood's favorite gal of the moment, Jennifer Coolidge, grabbed a win too. And as Eddie Murphy accepted the Cecil B. DeMille Award, he joked that one of his keys to success is, quote, keep Will Smith's wife's name out your bleeping mouth. Moving on to the post that you've been loving this week. Damar Hamlin is back home in Buffalo as he continues his recovery from cardiac arrest. But even from the hospital, he made time to cheer for his team. Netflix dropped the first look at its new Pamela Anderson doc this week. I blocked that stolen tape out of my life in order to survive. And now that it's all coming up again, I feel sick.
I want to take control of the narrative for the first time. That's out January 31st. While Kim Kardashian's daughter, <laughs> Northwest, is showing off her creativity and her epic toys. Mall haul. I'm owner one and I'm owner two. North would have a mini mall in her backyard. We spotted a pint-sized KKW beauty store, a market, and even a Starbucks. And there'll be a lot more little ones in Hollywood in the new year. Shamar Moore mm -hmm. is about to be a daddy. The 52-year-old revealed in an upcoming TV appearance that he's expecting his first child on a meaningful date, the third anniversary of his mother's death. On February 8th, I'm gonna make one of her dreams come true. An Instagram video later showed that he's having a girl. Kaylee Cuoco and Tom Pelfrey celebrated their daughter on the way with a star-studded baby shower. Cheers to making better choices, baby. A pal of Kaylee's tells people that it wasn't a traditional baby shower, but more like a party, adding that she's super excited and can't wait for her baby girl to arrive. Claire Danes and Hugh Dancy are preparing for baby number three together as Jessie J gets ready to welcome her first. I'm yours, you're mine, baby, baby. Two years after suffering a miscarriage, Jessie announced her pregnancy while showing off her baby bump. And Kiki Palmer knows a thing or two about that. I'm pregnant with a baby right now. The expecting actress recently dazzled in a sequin gown while being honored at the New York Film Critics Circle Awards. Now, let's move on to some screen time. I am so excited to be joined by Melissa Rausch, whose new show, Night Court, premieres on Tuesday, January 17th on NBC and Peacock. So, what brings you to town? I moved here for a job. I am the new Night Court judge. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you five questions. For question number one, you'll give me one answer. Question number two, you'll give me two answers, and so on and so forth. Are you ready to get started? Let's do it. Your new show, Night Court, is not exactly a reboot. It's more of a continuation. It's so funny. It's such a breath of fresh air, and you play Harry Stone's daughter, Judge Abby Stone, who's sort of taking on the reins. And in real life, is there one time that you misjudge something? You know what? I think that I misjudge sometimes how tall I am. It may be more of like, I'm overestimating, maybe not potentially like misjudging, but I forget what a short person I am oftentimes, and I will go and do something or like, and, and realize that I, that's not something that I can do. It's a lot of misjudging myself. How do you think you would do as a real life judge? I, I think I'd be pretty good. I think I'm a pretty fair person. You know, my, my character on the show really likes to dig deep and ask people a lot of questions about themselves and sort of find, get to the heart of the matter at hand. And I think that I, I enjoy people and sort of <laughs> finding, finding out the real deal. I'm such a huge fan of yours from your charitable endeavors to your role on The Big Bang Theory to now your new role on Night Court. What two roles are you most proud of? Oh, um, honestly, I would say um, the, being the mother to my two kids is, is the best role ever. And it's the, the most fulfilling and just, uh, yeah, my, my heart's never been happier. Now, I know playing a friendly judge must have been so much fun, especially with the live studio audience, that whole entire element. Can you tell me three ways that you got into character? Hmm, uh, let's see. Would it be weird to say that I just wore a judge's robe at all times? From the moment you woke up and had breakfast? <laughs> yeah, just at all, I was never not in a judge's robe. Um, I, I swear that's the truth. That's good. And what are the other two ways that you prepared for it? I, I did some arm workouts because there's a lot of, you know, the gaveling takes strength. So I would like to say that I really hit the gym. I just really worked on that gavel muscle. I was a big, big fan of the show growing up and um, it was just wonderful to revisit those episodes. And I have such a love and admiration for the original. So it was it was very special to go back as we were developing the show and then throughout the season to, to rewatch some of the magic that they created. You know, the cast of Night Court is really amazing. I love that we're seeing old and new faces 
Can you tell me four memorable experiences or four memories that you have from being on set? I think what's really special about this group is that, you know, what I what I took with me is the fact that we're very much a workplace family on camera and that also really happened off camera as well. Um, we really just, there was sort of an instant bond between everyone. The memories I have of the shooting, the 16 episodes we have are like sitting around in the cafeteria scenes, all just laughing together and um, hearing John tell us stories from, uh, he's the most incredible storyteller and you just sort of like hang on his every word. Um, so I think there's, there's, I think, four memories sort of mixed up in there of all the, yeah. the goodness that we experienced. And finally, give us five reasons that everyone should watch Night Court. John Larroquette, Lacrita, India de Beaufort, Gil Tawalker, and it's really funny and I think you'll enjoy it. I realize that you're doing me a favor, but is there any way you could do that favor slightly differently? Ish. <laughs> Melissa, thank you so much for joining me today. Now, everyone, make sure you check out Night Court on Tuesday, January 17th on NBC and Peacock. All right, time's up. We'll see you back here next Thursday.